So in today's video, I want to explore an essential tool for anyone managing cloud servers. And this tool is called Cloud Init, and it streamlines the process of setting up your servers by automating tasks like system updates, user account creation, and SSH key configuration. So whether you're a seasoned user or just starting out, this guide will help you simplify your server setup process and enhance security. So let's dive in. So I'm logged into my cloud manager and on the surface, you're probably wondering where cloud in it is. Well, the way you access it is by going in and creating a Linode and let's walk through that process now so I can show you guys how to get to it. But first step within the process or the form that you fill out when creating the Linode, if you go in here under images, you'll see this little icon right here next to the image. And basically this shows you that the image is compatible with cloud init and there's several Im images in here that support it. They're all Debian based currently. So Debian 11, not all the Debians, but Debian 11. And if we scroll down here and we look at our Ubuntu's, we'll see that we have a couple other options here. So Ubuntu 23.10, as well as the long-term supported release of 22.04 and 20. Dot zero four. So what I'll use for this example is Ubuntu 22.04. And what you want to do is go through and make all your selections to set up a Linode. And so let's do our region right fast. And then our plan, I'll do a Linode one gigabyte. And then we can also set up a root password. So I'll go through, type in a super strong password for this example. And then you can set up SSH keys. You also have firewall options, VLANs, backups, private IPs, all that good stuff. All the typical things you would see when setting up a Linode. But one of the things people don't notice is there's another option here that says add user data. Well, this is where you put your cloud init configuration files and not the actual files, but the information within those files and it's written in the yaml format and i went ahead and wrote out a few examples just to show you guys how this all works and all you have to do is put this information within the user data and then the cloud manager see that you have some user data here and it will make those changes to your server right after it's provisioned. So let me switch over to my text editor so I can walk you guys through the examples that I wrote out. And then what I'll do is copy that text and then drop it in here. And then we'll run through and create the node. And then we can verify that all the changes were made to the virtual machine as it's being built within the platform. So let's switch over right fast. All right, so like I stated, I already created the configuration file for us. And like I said, it's in that YAML formatting language. If you guys need help, with that there's a lot of resources online that can teach you how to write in the yaml language it's not that difficult but with cloud init you have a whole bunch of options that you can write out that will handle certain things when the server is booted up like for instance this one i wrote up it goes through and updates the system because typically when you set up a virtual machine a lot of times it needs updates it's not always updated to the latest version meaning all the packages on the system and that's what this will do and like i said i didn't want to type it all out for you guys and make the video super long but i just wrote a lot of this before the video so you guys can get an idea of how it actually looks but it's always best to write out a lot of notes so i typically do this within my day-to-day -day job i'm a database administrator so i typically have to put a lot of notes in any code that i'm writing so if someone comes behind me they know exactly what i'm doing they can see the notes for each step throughout the process of the configuration file and if you're looking at this and you've used ansible you probably say this looks familiar yes it definitely is similar to the way you write out things in ansible which is an automation tool as well. One of the things, like I stated, was updating the system. You basically just write it out. So package underscore updates, colon, and then true. We want it to update. So that'll refresh our repositories and check to see if there are any updates for the system. And then it'll run through and do a package upgrade by putting this command in there. So package underscore upgrade equals true. So if there are any updates for the system, it'll go down and run through those updates. And I also put in here a little bit of server configuration. So you can set things like the time zone so I set it up for a US specific and I'll show you guys that when we get into the server we can verify all of this worked when we hop into the server and then you could do things like change the host name so I, I set the name for this server that I want to create is lab dash zero one so we'll see the host name change as well and then also you can install additional software packages and all you have to do is type package and then colon 
and then list out the packages. And then YAML, it's a little bit different. You don't want to use tabs, you use spaces in most cases. So just type it out exactly the way you see it on all the examples that you'll find online. And you can also check Linode's website for examples as well. They put examples out there as well on how to do things. So I said, well, let's set up a web server for this configuration. So that's why I put Apache in there, MySQL server, as well as PHP, which is essentially the LAMP stack. So I put those options in there. So those additional pieces of software will be installed once we create our Linode. And it's super cool. Like I said, this automation, you can set up a whole bunch of configuration files. And what I typically do is save them in a text file. That way I can reference them back or go grab them. So let's say I need to create a web server, a new web server, then I can grab this modify it, change the host name or something. And depending on the location, update the time zone if I need to, and then just grab this. So all I'm gonna do is copy it and then head back over to our cloud manager and we can paste this in under our user data. And so as long as you typed it out correctly, and that's why I use that text file, you wanna make sure you put it in a YAML format. So it's correctly put in here when you paste it in here. Your cloud manager will grab this information and make all these changes to the server based on what you wrote as far as the options that you set. So all we have to do is go down to create Linode. And once this server is provisioned and booted up, like I said, it'll run through all those changes. We can go in and actually check to verify all these changes were made. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, our server is up and running. And so let's go down and log into it. So let's grab our SSH access and switch over to our terminal and Let's go in and check that all of our changes were made to the server. So let's go down and press enter. It'll add the fingerprint, just like any other time, your first time logging into a server. Press enter, type in our super strong password that we created and press enter. They'll log into our new system. And right off, we can tell that our changes took because the host name has changed. As you can see right there, it says lab-01. That's specifically what we put in that configuration file for the server to do. So it'll, it changed the host name of the system. So let's run some other commands. Since we're logged in as root, we don't have to use sudo. So let's type apps updates and press enter. It'll run through, check for updates. And as you can see, all packages are up to date. So that looks like that port of our cloud config script actually ran as well. Now, a couple other things we could check. We could type time date CTL. If you guys never heard of that command, but that basically shows us our time zone and we can grep out our actual time zone. It, it shows us the time of the system, but it's time date CTL and I'll grep out our time zone. And we're just looking for a specific text in there. That's what grep does is search for specific text. If you need help, just look for other videos on our channel that has information on how to use a lot of these Linux commands, but just type them out quickly, but time date CTL, and then we're grepping for time zone, just to check the time zone. As you can see, we are in US Pacific, which is PST. So we're good to go. And then one other thing we did in our configuration file was install some applications. So we could type apt list, and then we could check for all installed packages. And let's press enter. It's a very long list. It's kind of hard to go through this way, but I just wanted to at least show you another way. But but we could check the status of these applications as well. So for one, I know we install PHP. So let's check for that and verify that that's installed. And as you can see, PHP is installed. And then Apache is, and let's look for a MySQL server because I know that is installed. So it installed all the dependencies and you know, MySQL got it set up and running. And then the third package we put in there will be up at the top. So Apache 2, yep. And we have Apache 2 installed and it's updated, all that good stuff. So let's go down here. And also we could just check the status of everything. Cause most of the time with Apache, it go on and install it, start the service and enable it. So each time you reboot the server, it will have Apache running. So we could type system CT and then status, check our status and then Apache two and let's press enter and I'll check the set service of Apache. And as you can see, it's active running and enabled up here. And then we can also check uh, my SQL. That's another one to check. So my SQL, I tap it out, press enter. That's active running. So we get to go with all our packages. They have been installed using our cloud Nick. All right, so let me show you guys another config that I wrote out. Let's go down and exit out of this server. And then let's go back over to our cloud manager. And 
remove this virtual machine. So I'm gonna just go in here, delete it, grab the name of it, drop it in there, hit delete. That will delete that Linode for us. And let's go through and create another one. And I'll just quickly create it right fast. Let's use Ubuntu, select our region, X shared Linode password. So we can type in our root passwords, which doesn't matter for this file that I'm creating because it'll use SSH keys. Like I said, you can use your SSH keys or add a SSH key up here if you want to and the user account and all that good stuff. But we're gonna do it all from our cloud config and we don't need to do anything with the firewall VLAN. What we wanna go under is that user data. And so let's switch back over to our text editor and let's open up our other cloud config file that I created. So let's go open file. And this is considered like a hoarding config. I wrote it in a different way. Like I stated earlier in the video, you can create user accounts and you can also add SSH keys and all that good stuff. You can set it up. You can set the groups of the users. You can set up how you want that user to have access as far as the shell. So bin bash, this is my SSH key, my public SSH key, which is what you want to put in here. You never want to put your private. You always want to put your public. And I'm also going to run a update of the system as well. We're going to configure that time zone. I basically add it on to our base configuration by creating a user account so that stuff is still there and then what one thing i did was i went in and hoarding ssh this is one cool feature you know you want to use cloud in it for so as soon as you bring up the server it'll go on and set our SSH configurations to where it won't allow root login at all on the server. And then also I said, well, let's just use the same packages. We could install, you know, something different. You just want to verify that you're typing in properly, but you can get all those packages installed. Let's go on and uh, copy this. And like I said, I didn't want to go through typing everything because it'll make the video like super long, but let's go back over to our cloud manager and then we can paste that in there right fast. And then let's go through and create our Linode. Oh, and one other option I forgot to show you guys, I named the host name for this lab two. So you'll see lab zero two in there. So let's go down and hit create Linode. That's really the only cha other change I made in there other than add adding the SSH keys and all that good stuff. And so once this provision, I'll go down and log into it. I'll show you guys how to log into it right fast. All right, so our server is up and running. It didn't take too long. Let's go down and copy our SSH access command and then switch back over to our terminal and let's clear just so you guys know that we're logging into a different server and we need to make changes to it. Well, actually, let's try it with root right fast. Just show you guys. It will not allow root access. It should have made those changes. So we're going to type in our password that I know we set correctly and it should say permissions denied because it won't allow root login yeah and as you can see permission denied please try again so i'm gonna hit control c that'll get us back to the terminal and what we need to type instead of that is our new user account this is a way of verifying it that it actually works and i'm logging in from the system that those ssh keys apply to they apply to my system these are my personal ssh keys for specific cloud servers and that's my public key that i put in our configuration file so should work right off so ssh josh i don't have to specify the key it's gonna unlock the key i think i have a password on it yeah the private key so you can type in whatever password you set for your private key if you have a passphrase set on your key type that in it'll automatically log us in and as you can see by the name is josh and then lab so our system is somewhat hoarding we could have done a little bit more but I just wanted to show you guys a base configuration file. I didn't want to go too complex, but, and then of course I'm only showing it to you. There are plenty of examples out there of how to actually use it, but I'm not going to go through and do all those checks again. Pretty much if this worked, that mean everything else work. It, sh it shouldn't have ran into any issues unless I made a grammar error, which I tested this before this video and I didn't, I checked everything just to verify. So it all worked. And that concludes our guide on using cloud init for automating server configurations and security. And I've covered everything from creating your cloud config file to deploying a instance with ease. And I hope this tutorial simplifies your cloud management and enhances your cloud infrastructure. And for more detailed information and advanced techniques, don't forget to check out the comprehensive guides that they have on Linode documentation website. Thanks for watching. And if you found this tutorial helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned for more tech tips and guides. Peace.